Thanks, John. Good morning. Okay, these are my disclosures. So immune therapy is uh, uh, starting to gain significant traction in the treatment of cancer, especially in lymphomas. And you've heard multiple talks covering CAR T cells and, and other uh, platforms. I'll try to cover uh, the in, uh, novel antibodies, mainly the uh, bispecifics, uh, full antibodies, and, and also the antibody drug conjugates. So <clears throat> just from a historic uh, point of view, it's really not that historic. This is a, a slide from a review article that um, we wrote about in 2010, looking at the landscape of uh, uh, antibody therapy in lymphomas. And almost all of these antibodies disappeared, with a few exceptions. So this is how the field is, is evolving. You know, we're testing a lot of antibodies. Few are becoming successful. We're dumping them and moving for, you know, uh, forward to test new ones. And then now uh, new platforms are emerging, which is the bispecifics. <clears throat> and when we talk about bispecifics, there are multiple form, forms or platforms of bispecifics. The first one, earlier one, was the bite, which um, uh, combines two binding sites of an antibodies uh, to form a single chain um, uh, construct. One end will bind to a target, and in this example, CD19, and then and another end bind to a, um, a CD3 that bring T cells to the site of the disease and therefore uh, um, uh, induce cell death. And of course, the CAR T cells is sort of, sort of a different version of bite because it inserts the T cell part inside the T cells while the binding sites is sticks out uh, as a single chain uh, anti CD19. So with the bispecifics, there's, as I said, multiple formats or platforms. The simplest one is the bite or bicell, uh, uh, bispecific T cell in, in Gaja. This is single uh, polypeptide chain that brings the um, uh, two binding sites of two antibodies. The second one is a dart, which is a two uh, polypeptide chains linked with disulfide uh, uh, bridge to bring them together. And there's a platforms of this being tested in clinical trials. None are reported so far in, uh, uh, publicly, but there's clinical trials conducting, conducted with the darts. And there's a TANDAPS, which is uh, two single chains that are dimerized to produce multiple binding sites, again, of CD3 and then target uh, 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 antibody binding sites. In this example, is CD19. And as again, you can take this even further. For example, a dart where you have these two um, um, uh, binding sites to make it a longer acting. Um, and remember that the, the bite, the uh, uh, tumor map, it, it's a very short uh, construct, so it has a very short half-life. You have to give it by continuous infusion. So you can do, do tricks to prolong the half-life of these constructs. In this example here, for this humanized by specific uh, CD19, CD3, you can link it to a mutated FC fragment that doesn't bind, has no function except like make the molecule larger, so it increases its half-life. And there's multiple platforms looking at this uh, strategy. So the multiple clinical trials are ongoing with these different uh, bispecific antibodies, mainly phase ones, very, very few phase twos, and very few been reported publicly, and those who are reported really involve a few number of patients. So whatever I show you, the numbers may look, the percentage of response may look good, but the numbers treated are, are not very high, so you need to put this in uh, context. So blinatumumab uh, and non-Hodgkin lymphoma, you know it's been approved for ALL, and non-Hodgkin lymphoma has a signal it's given by continuous infusion. There are multiple um, uh, uh, different do uh, doses and schedule being used. The last one was a ramping schedule, mainly to mitigate the uh, cytokine release syndrome and in neurotoxicity has been also seen in, in, in CAR T cells. Um, so the last uh, uh, schedule and uh, been uh, 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 propagated at least, you start with ramping dose with five microgram per meter squared per day for one week and then jump to the 60, which is the target dose level or do two ramping, so five mic uh, per um, meter square per day per one week, um, then 15, then go to say 16. And then the initial one was like just those escalation uh, uh, strategy. The overall response rate uh, was 69% uh, at the target dose level, which is a 60 mics. And if you look at the diffuse large basal lymphoma, the overall response rate 55%, which looks again pretty good with a median duration of response is about uh, exceeding one year, about 400 uh, days. Second one is a, is a bispecific which from Regeneron, which is uh, uh, Rgen 1979. This is a full antibody with mutated FC, so it really doesn't function within ADCC. It just functions as bispecific. One end bind to CD3 and one end bind to CD19. It's fully human antibody. 
um, and um, um, it's, uh, it's, it's a given uh, as a, 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 a weekly infusion. Um, this is the initial data from the phase one trial looking at responses across different histologies and across different dose levels. Again, you see some responses uh, in this context. And with the most uh, recent update from last year, you can see even uh, better responses at two different dose levels, more than five mic or less than five mics. And if you look at the numbers of diffuse large B cell lymphoma, small number, 11 patients, but about 45% uh, uh, response rate, which looks also um, an interesting. The other platforms uh, from Genentech and Roche, uh, one is similar to the Regeneron, which is a full uh, uh, human antibody with one end bind CD20, the other end bind CD3 with a mutation in the FC fragment. And the other platform, which has two binding sites of CD20 and one binding site of CD3, and they're both ongoing in phase one and, and phase two uh, clinical trials. So these are the trials and they're being uh, uh, conducted, and you'll see some of these results at ASH, none of them being reported publicly with the uh, most Tuzumab, which is, this is the uh, bispecific one binding site of CD3 and one binding site of CD20. It's been tested as single agent and in combination with atezolizumab, in combination with uh, polatuzumab, and in combination with ARTSHARP, uh, and concurrently, and also as an adjuvant post-chemotherapy. And we'll see some of these results in, uh, at ASH, I think. So the field, as I said, is evolving. The platform keeps it changing. Uh, there is no, no front runner for uh, lymphoid malignancies. There's interesting signals with different platforms, but most of the times the number of patients treated is relatively small, and combination studies are ongoing with these by specifics. ADCs is becoming more interesting, and I'll show you why in a minute. But in, in general, ADCs are like a naked antibody that is conjugated to a, a warhead or a payload through a linker. And some people like to um, use a term payload for both the linker and the warhead. I, I'd rather use the, the payload for the warhead itself. And the payloads are, in, gen in general, uh, uh, broken down into major classes, the microtubule disruption, uh, disrupting agents, and these are the DM1, DM4, MMAE, and MMAF. The MMAE, as all of you know, this is the brintuximab protein uh, 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 payload. And DNA damaging uh, um, uh, 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 payloads, uh, the, uh, uh, I think the one that most of you would remember is glitchomycin, but the PPD now is uh, getting uh, more attention in the SN38 uh, also being used uh, to uh, uh, conjugate antibodies. Again, just a little bit um, uh, historical things. This is from a few years ago in, in 2015, a presentation at ASCO looking at landscape of ADCs. You can see the number of ADCs being tested, different uh, uh, disease uh, subset of lymphoid malignancies. Some of these ADCs already disappeared. And I think most focus now on uh, CD22, uh, CD19, and then the CD79. Um, back in, uh, a few years ago, we, we tested a, uh, a CD19 uh, ADC, it's called SAR3419. This is from Sanofi, which is used to conjugate DM4 to an anti-CD19 humanized uh, 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 antibody. Responses were seen in, uh, across different dose levels, uh, across different histologies. This is blue is the uh, diffuse large B cell lymphoma, and then in the dark gray is the follicular lymphoma. And in patients who had re retoxin refractory disease, blue retoxin refractory meeting the definition, no response or progression after six months of therapy, and yellow uh, retoxin uh, sensitive. You look at this, you say, well, this is look looking interesting. Um, so what happens to this uh, antibody drug conjugate? It turned out that some of these payloads in MMA, uh, F, and DM4 have a unique uh, uh, eye uh, toxicity, uh, which is a, a, a microcystic deposits in the cornea that can lead to a severe decrease in visual acuity. And I remember when we, when we started doing the phase one a trial, and the patients with a relapsed follicular lymphoma had only two prior treatment regimens, so the guy is not, not, really did not represent unmet medical need, and functionally fine, walking and working full time. We got a phone call that he can't see anymore, like really blind. He said, I can't read the newspaper, I can't see anymore. And all of us panicked. And just, you, know, you have a heart attack when you have these side effects in, in patients who really doesn't you know, uh, have a major unmet medical need. It took a while to figure out these uh, unique uh, uh, toxic effects. Uh, these are all reversible, scary like hell, but reversible. You need to reassure the patient that don't worry, you know, you're going to be blind for a couple of days and then you're going to recover it. Gonna... <laughs> sort of like the CAR T cells. Don't worry, you're going to have a coma for a few days and you're going to recover after that. Yeah? So, you, so it took a lot of consenting and talking and holding hands, and, but the you know, trial was completed, 
but it's, it's it generated some level of uncomfort on how do you position these agents with unique side effects, especially in patient population with not really major uh, unmet medical need. The second uh, 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 um, CD19 targeted agent is the SGN19, which is uh, also uh, conjugated to MMAF, which has almost the same um, uh, ocular toxicities. So same story here, different payload, but it has a similar ocular toxicity. You have some uh, uh, um, uh, decrease in visual equities. And as you can see here, the most common side effects is, is visual things. Less neuropathy. Neuropathy, you see it more with the MMAE, which is the payload for uh, polatuzumab and also for brentuximab virutin. This is MMAF. But the response rate is also pretty good. You know, again, if you see this waterfall plot in heavily predicted patients, it's very impressive with the response rate and CR rate. PFS is not as impressive, but not, not surprising, especially in patients with relapsed diffuse large B-cell lymphomas and other malignancies. But again, this agent is, is disappearing because of this unique side effect, not because of lack of efficacy, but, it's, but because of the unique side effects. Then two antibody drug conjugates showed up, targeting CD22 and CD79, uh, using an MMAE. This is, again, the uh, uh, payload used for brentuximab virutin. And when your company have both of them, it's, it's, uh, uh, it's embarrass embarrassment of riches. You try to figure out which one you're going to move forward. So you can you know, afford to do randomized phase two trials, randomizing both agents against each other and see which one wins in terms of safety and, and uh, efficacy. So they ran two phase one and expansion phase two parallel at the same time with both antibody drug conjugates, CD22 and CD79 uh, uh, targeted agents. And if you look at the um, uh, side effects, this is for Pola, CD, uh, for PINA CD22 targeting agents and Pola CD79 targeted agents, really a mirror image because the side effects mainly from the payload, not from the antibody. So this, as long as you conjugate it with the same payload, you have almost similar side effects. Efficacy, same thing, comes from mainly from the payload. It's almost mirror image of both uh, uh, antibodies, so similar efficacy and similar safety profile. Then both were uh, then, uh, combined with rituximab um, and, uh, and the randomized uh, phase two called Romulus, so R plus Polap uh, uh, and R plus uh, Pino. And you can see here that, again, mirror image and the side effects, exactly the same, whether you use the CD79 or the CD22 plus rituximab in this example. Neuropathy is the most common side effects, but again, the response rate is almost identical in both uh, uh, agents and a PFS almost identical in diffuse large B-cell lymphoma and follicular lymphoma. This led to a corporate decision to move forward polatuzumab, which is CD79 uh, targeted agents with the MMAE uh, 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 conjugate. Uh, this is to show the um, um, response rate with the um, pola plus rituximab uh, in large cell lymphoma, 51%, and follicular lymphoma, uh, 60%. And this is the uh, PINA, uh, uh, which is uh, CD22. Again, similar response rate, 67 and 54%. And just to benchmark it here, use, looking at, uh, at the uh, calichomycin uh, uh, CMC544, it's a 41% as single agent, not with the reduction. So what happened next then, you uh, uh, tried to figure out what's the ideal dose. Now you selected polatuzumab, what's the ideal dose? Should you go to 2.4 or 1.8 uh, uh, milligram per uh, kilogram? So you do, again, test two, two different doses in a, in a sort of like a two expansion cohorts, almost randomized phase two trial. And it seems to be like there's similar response rate with whether you use 1.8 or 2.4, but the toxicity profile was more favorable with the 1.8 compared to 2.4. So 1.8 was selected to move forward, even though the responses were almost uh, the same. So this was selected based on the safety uh, profile. So fast forward, now we're seeing these antibody drug conjugates being combined uh, in, um, in with chemotherapy. The first one was reported, it's interesting, a randomized phase two trial in relapsed follicular lymphoma and diffuse large B-cell lymphoma with the backbone of bendamustine and rituximab. So 80 patients with follicular lymphoma and 80 patients with, with diffuse large B-cell lymphoma were randomized for BR as a control arm or BR plus polatuzumab using the 1.8 mg uh, per kg design. Some of you have probably seen this uh, data. Um, uh, the um, uh, uh, median age, 71 and 67, uh, for the diffuse large B-cell lymphomas, and many patients had a progression of disease within 12 months from their last treatment, 83% and uh, 80%. But what's interesting is the, the difference in the response rate and the complete response rate uh, between the BR versus BR plus POLA. This is by independent review, overall response rate. You can see um, a big difference, and the CR rate is also a huge difference. 
and this is by investigators. But what's also more interesting is if you look at the PFS and even overall survival was more in favor of the polatuzumab BR compared to BR alone. This is its overall survival. We're seeing already a difference, and this is progression-free survival. One could argue that the BR may be not the ideal backbone or comparator, but this is what the, how the trial was conducted uh, um, uh, in this uh, setting. So um, this is my uh, uh, before last slide, just to show where we stand here. Despite all this research, and, and I'll show this in my afternoon talk, and then when we talk about new drugs and large lymphomas, and then multiple phase one and phase two and randomized trials, right now the winner is really ADCs and CAR T cells, um, uh, and if you look at the big picture. And that's where we are. Um, so you have three different at least platforms of CAR T cells to approve for large lymphomas. And if you look at this waterfall plot at the single agent activity of any single agent tested in diffuse large B cell lymphoma, the winners here are, um, regardless of its toxicity, are the antibody drug conjugates. Um, so it's interesting, uh, uh, I think, time to watch how this will evolve in the, in the future. So in conclusions, uh, anti-CD20 antibodies remain the uncontested naked uh, antibodies for the treatment of lymphomas. There's additional platforms looking at CD19, whether through CAR T cells, bites, and by specific, or even naked antibodies, which I didn't have time to discuss. Polatuzumab vedotin is the leading ADC drug uh, in drug development for uh, B-cell malignancies at the present time. And thank you.